Hello Tamers, now it's time to open ST13, the Ragnalord Star Deck. So first let's pluck out the deck and the Tamers and take a look at the playmats. Now I gotta be frank with you guys, I honestly think that I like the original BT3 Ragnalord artwork a lot more, but this one is still really really badass. But I mean I just kind of don't like the pose where he's just kind of standing there. The BT3 one felt more dynamic, but still... Very, very cool, one of my favorite design Digimon. And on the back, what do we have? Of course, we have Durandamon facing off against Briwei Ludramon. It took me a really long time to realize that Briwei Ludramon is literally just flames wearing armor. And Durandamon is super cool as always. I think I kind of like this side a bit better because it's like it has this really nice clash between the two that just cuts in the middle of this diagonal line. So let's use this as the backdrop for today. First again, allow me to introduce to you guys the other two new sleeves and recommend all of you to buy them when they come out in your territories. First, we have one featuring Jellymon, Angoromon, and Gammamon from the new Digimon Ghost Game anime, and this is just absolutely adorable. Perfect for your Ghost Game themed deck, but it's just a bit unfortunate that you won't be able to use all three inside. I mean, if it's green, it'll just be Angora, Mono Blue for Jelly, or Mono Red for Gammamon. But who knows, maybe in the future they'll make a deck where you can actually interact with all three of them. And of course, Shoutmon and Shoutmon Cross Four. I am so hyped for the Digicross mechanic coming out in BT10. This season of reveals is just so exciting for me. And this sleeve's design is just a perfect addition to that hype. I cannot wait to get those Digicross cards in physical and try them out for myself. Okay, we already know what the tamers are, let's take a look at the deck. Digitama Sakutsmon, inheritable during your turn once per turn. When your other Legend Arms Digimon is played by an effect, memory plus one. Just imagine the shenanigans if you have multiple Digimon with this guy in your inheritable out on the field. Because the thing about this Ragnar Mon deck is that you are going to be playing many Digimon. So there is definitely a good chance that you'll end up having quite a few, maybe two Digimon with Sakutmon in their evolution cards on the field. Here we have the new Zubamon looking really cool and cute at the same time. On play, by placing this guy as the bottom evolution source of your other Legend Arms or Black Digimon, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a Legend Arms Digimon with a play cost of 7 or less, you may play it for free. Otherwise, add it to your hand. Inheritable on attack, if you control a Legend Arms or Black Digimon, delete one opposing Digimon with 3k DP or less. So the Inheritable is just okay, but the main thing about the on play is that it allows you to potentially bring out a level 5 Legend Arms immediately. Zuba Eagermon on play by putting him as the bottom evolution source of your other Legend Arms or Black Digimon. Delete one opposing Digimon with 5k DP or less. The Inheritable is the same as Zubamon. So just slowly uh, picking away at the opponent's low DP Digimon. And here we go, the level 5, 7 play cost Duramon. During your turn, when this Digimon evolves into a Legend Arms or Black card from your hand, reduce the evolution cost by 1. And inheritable at the end of your turn, you can perform a DNA Digivolution with this Digimon and one of your other Digimon. Duramon, two copies of him, and here we go! Durandamon himself, our first SR in this deck. Man, I love the unique foiling that comes with all of these uh, starter deck foils. So first, I mean, first of all, this artwork is so badass. I think it's the best looking card in this deck and a very big upgrade of the original Durandamon we got. I'm not even sure how to describe the foiling within the artwork here. There's just like lines, clouds and sparkles. Anyway, 3 costs to evolve from both red and black during your turn once per turn. When this Digimon's evolution card increases by your effect, during this turn, this Digimon gets plus 3k DP and security attack plus 1. On attack, reveal the top 3 cards of your deck. You may play a Legend Arms Digimon from among them with a play cost of 7 or less at no cost. Return the remaining to the bottom of your deck in any order. So the point of this is that not only do you get an additional Digimon, as you guys have already seen, the Legend Arms at level 3 and level 4 have on plays which allow them to to hop into your other Legend Arms evolution source. So you check the top 3 cards of your deck, you get out a Zubamon or a Ludomon for example, they hop into Durandamon, and then his evolution sources increases giving him the power boost and security attack plus 1. And on Inheritable, during your turn, while this Digimon's name is Ragnar Lordmon, the security effects of the option cards this Digimon checks do not activate. 
So no need to run that one cost option card anymore, what was it called? The like something tactics? Hidden tactics was it? Yeah. But anyway, now your Ragnarok Mon comes with free security effects option negation. And th there we go, two copies of that and our second SR is going to be Ragnarok Mon himself appearing as a red black hybrid Digimon with DNA Digimon. Once again, the unique foiling is just mad, I have no idea how to describe it, but not sure if you guys can see, but there's actually foil carefully embroidered just within the lightning itself, and that just looks so epic in person. DNA Digivolve, red level 6 plus black level 6. On Evolve, Blitz. And if you evolve by DNA Digivolve, for every 4 evolution cards this Digimon possesses, delete one opposing Digimon with a play cost of 20 or less, and trash your opponent's top secured. Now, although this is the deck's main mechanic, we have to admit that it's going to be quite difficult and tricky to assemble two level 6s just to perform the Jogress. The Legend Arms new Gasha mechanic helps to facilitate this by allowing you to drop another level 5 for free, and then Jogressing at the end of your turn, while still allowing you to attack with Ragnarok since it has unevolved Blitz. But in such a scenario, the maximum number of evolution cards Ragnarok would have would be 7. Cause that's level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5, level 6 for your main Digimon that was raised in the raising area. And then the partner Digimon that got dropped from the Gasha would be level 5 and then level 6 for a total of 7 evolution cards. Which means you will only get to delete one opposing Digimon and trash one security. But if you are able to somehow pull off a Jogress between two level 6 Digimon that have been raised since like level 3, then you will be able to create a Ragnarok with 8 evolution cards at least, bombing 2 security and 2 opposing Digimon at the same time, but that is probably going to be a rare occurrence, which might also depend on what new support this deck will receive in future boosters. On all turns, once per turn, when either you or your opponent's security decreases, unsuspend this Digimon. Double attacker, double block. And we get two copies of him. You need to buy two of the start deck if you want to receive a total of four. Okay, next we have a new Kodemon similar to the Candlemon in the Jessmon start deck. Two cost to play, 3k DP. This is the Chikurimon I mentioned in the Jessmon opening, which prevents both players from reducing play costs, which is going to hurt uh, Digicross quite badly. And being black, I guess he might fit quite well in the Twilight deck. Next, we have Ludomon. Once again, love the artwork, and I love how his in-training stage is intentionally placed in this artwork because the Digitama is Sakutmon instead. So by doing this, you still kind of technically have all of the forms within this one deck. On play, the exact same as Zubamon, he can hop as the bottom evolution source under your Legend Arms or Red Digimon, check the top card of your deck, and if it is a play cost 7 or less Legend Arms, you can play it for free. On Inheritable, during the opponent's turn, while you control a Legend Arms or Red Digimon, this Digimon becomes a blocker. Very good. 3 and 4. Next, we have a new Gladimon, 1 cost. More support for Lord Nightmon, I guess. 1 cost evolves to champion. And here we have uh, Tia Ludomon. On play, by hopping into the evolution source of your other Legend Arms or Red Digimon, one of your Digimon gains reboots until your opponent's next turn end. The Inheritable is the same as Ludomon, which basically gives your Legend Arms or Red Digimon blocker. So that technically means that these lower level Legend Arms cards, although they are obviously designed to work in the Legend Arms deck, they can actually be used as support in other red and black decks as well. Here we have a 2 color, Vanilla Nightmon and level 5, 2 copies of him, and next we have Rigeldmon in rare. During the opponent's turn, this Digimon cannot be deleted by your opposing effects. The Inheritable is the same as Durandamon, allowing you to perform a DNA Digivolve with this Digimon and your other Digimon at the end of your turn. Funny how this is rare, but Duramon is only uh, uncommon. And here we go, the strongest shield, Briwei Ludramon. Four cost to evolve from both black and red with 12k DP. During your turn, once per turn, when this Digimon's evolution cards increases by your effects, until your opponent's next turn end, this Digimon cannot be deleted or returned to the hand or deck by opposing effects. So this kind of helps make sure Brewe Ludramon will survive on the field for one turn, and then maybe you can get into Durandamon the next turn and then perform a Jogress there. On Evolve, just like Durandamon, reveal the top three cards of your deck, you may play a play cost 7 or less Legend Arms Digimon from among them, and no cost and return the remaining to the bottom of your deck, and in doing so, if it is one of the lower level ones, you can trigger their on play to jump into his evolution source and trigger the first effect. Inheritable, during the opponent's turn, while this Digimon is Ragnar Lordmon, it is unaffected by your opponent's 
Digimon effects. So this is the first card in the game that can basically bestow effects immunity. Well, at least it's still limited to just Digimon, so it's not super broken. After all, allowing it to still be affected by option cards is still very fair. Okay, and I believe two copies... Oh no, four copies of Brewe Ludra, alright. So we'll need to buy another deck in order to get those extra copies that we need for Duranda and Ragnalord. Here's Ragnalord's signature finishing move, Direct Smasher. While you control a Digimon with Legend Arps in its traits, this card can be used without color restrictions. On main, delete one opposing Digimon with the highest DP on security, activate main. Okay, this is in rare and we got two copies of that and here we go! The archetype specific delay option card for Legend Arms, Legend Arm Allies at 4 cost. On main, you may play a play cost 7 or less Legend Arms Digimon from your hand at no cost. After that, place this card in your battle area. So yeah, just a 3 cost discount off a of level 5. And on delay, reveal the top 4 cards of your deck, return them to the top or bottom of your deck in any order. So this is extremely powerful and fits very well with the Legend Arms new Gacha mechanic, allowing you to alter the order of the cards on top of your deck to make sure you strike the lottery when you want. And of course, when your top 4 cards aren't looking very good, you can just send them to the bottom in order to reset your luck. The security is the same as the non-delay main. Yeah, I just love this card. And also the artwork is just perfect, with both Zubamon and Ludomon uniting against the D Brigade, I believe. They're just surrounded by Commandermons and Sealsdermons. Hopefully they manage to evolve and survive. Ooh, four copies of that. And finally, here we go, our beautiful memory gauges and the tutorial cards. So let's take a look at them. So first we have a red one with Durandamon and well, Technically black, but with the flames, it's pretty much red, with Brue Ludramon on the right. And connecting them creates something like this. And of course, don't think I have to introduce them again, because we get the exact same uh, six set of promo tamers in every single structure deck. I mean, start deck, doesn't matter which one you buy. Okay, so that'll be all for these openings of the new Jess and Ragnarok star decks. If you enjoyed these videos as usual, do give them a like. Let me know what you guys think about these new star decks in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more Digimon card game, booster box, and product openings on the day of release. And of course, look forward to my battle video between these two star decks as well. And with that, hope to see you guys in the next Digimon video.